what do you think the largest breakthrough within STEM or within engineering will be in the next 10 years and how will it affect the next generation of young girls? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm super biased because I work in crypto, so I'm like super deep on like the crypto anarchy scale. But I would say like definitely like um, AI is going to be incredibly interesting, like how robotics evolve and how um, kind of like machine brains evolve. I think will just be absolutely fascinating. And honestly, I know I don't know too much about that field, but you can kind of think about it just beginning with like self-driving cars as a part. But I bet that'll be like more and more. So sort of jobs that just require like manual labor or kind of like rote skills um, will increasingly become robotic. And then people who can like work with those robots um, will become the role. So it kind of not being afraid to get technical in that direction. Um, yeah, just to talk a little bit about crypto though. Crypto as a concept, is a way to mark something digital as um, unique. So there's only one of it, which is something we haven't really been able to do on the internet before. Like, I don't know if you've ever like torrented a music or like a, <laughs> or like, or like a movie, but like as far as digital things, you can make copies of them, you share the copies and there's no way to say this is the original or this is the one. Um, I would say that applies to like software, but also like abstractions, like within software, like a piece of digital art, for example, if you create a painting and you post it on the internet, like what's to stop someone from downloading it and reposting it as theirs, like nothing. So I think that concept of digital uniqueness is being used by currency now. And that alone will be really powerful. I think um, you don't really think of money as fake because we live in America where money feels really real. It's like a pretty stable currency and it controls a lot of our motives. Um, but money is just a contract. It's something that like the people close to you agree has a value. And then every nation has like different agreements of like what that value is. And for example, in certain countries, uh, like Argentina is a good example of this, currency stability has been a huge issue where like their price is fluctuating and dropping. Um, so being able to share that abstraction like across the globe, I think will be fascinating. And being able to have like a, almost like the internet did for communication, like crypto will do for money in that way, which I think will be really cool. Other than that though, I think like that concept of digital uniqueness will just allow people to kind of own their own content. So whether you're like an Instagram influencer, like owning your photos and being able to take it across platform. So rather than being like, ah, oh, I'm making all this content for TikTok or like just for Instagram, that's where it lives. Like it becomes platform agnostic and you own it and you can like take it anywhere. I think that will also be really cool. So I, technology is kind of like the undercurrent of like, no matter what you're doing. So even if you're like a photographer, like you depend on these platforms and the uploading technology at the end of the day. So I think, um, yeah, I, I think it's really an exciting time to be in both of those fields because it feels like anything is possible, but also like anything is possible. So you're like, oh, what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so true. And I think that in general, I mean, technology is the field that has the most potential in the next 10 years, five years to just increase at such a quick rate, even, even more than science, just because like literally every day there are new things coming out or new developments. And with crypto and stuff as well. It's just so it's moving so quickly. Yeah. I also think when people think of STEM or technology, sometimes they think of like um, the utility aspect, which in my mind, like um, Uber, for example, is a utility app. So like, even though it's like new, it's kind of doing something we could do before faster and more efficiently. And that's definitely one facet of technology. I think the second facet, which I think is more interesting is like, you can kind of create something that's like never been created before. Uh, so going back to like Zaha Hadid is like top women that I want to me like her style of like super organic building that was designed entirely in a computer and she figured out how to 3d print it in cement like that was never something that had been translated to the real world before that she kind of created and did using technology as a tool and i think um yeah that's what makes it so cool because like it's it just lets you sort of achieve anything you want and the options are are somewhat limitless which is cool yeah, no, that's that's so cool. So I'm so excited to see, you know, what happens in the next couple of years with all that. I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. What is one thing you wish you knew about STEM when you were little? And what advice would you give the girls watching your interview today? Yeah. So uh, to be honest, I think that viewing technology just as a tool to achieve whatever you want to do, an incredibly powerful one, is like not a perspective I had as a kid. Actually, I remember going to like the science fair in like fifth grade and kind of giving them prompt. And, they were, and I was like inventing from scratch, but like everything has already been invented. Like how could you possibly even get started? Um, and looking back, it's just, it's so funny because that's not even true. Like when I was that little in fifth grade, the internet was just being invented. Like it just completely fundamentally changed the world and like how it worked uh, and how you communicate with people and all these online communities. So I think um, 
viewing it just as like a skill that you learn that's like necessary to achieve what you want and not like um, something that's valuable in and of itself, uh, I think is a perspective that I wish I had that I would definitely encourage because I bet all of you will think of cool, fascinating, interesting things that no one else could. And um, I want you to be able to build it. <laughs> Even now you see something that was created and you're like, oh, wow, like this is the most this can ever be. But then, you know, in the next five years, so many more things come out. Like with the iPhone, totally. the first iPhone was pretty revolutionary for its time. And now there are 11 other iPhones. So it's just it's crazy. If you told people 10 years ago that everyone's going to have like a mini personal computer you can hold in your hand that's like more powerful than like the desktops back then, they would have laughed at you. But it's, it's true. I think I read somewhere that the computer that was programmed to help the astronauts get to the moon for the moon landing has less storage or has less space than our phone computers now, which is just incredible because that means essentially we could get to the moon using the technology on our phone, which is just I, I really scary. Yeah. <laughs> this was so, so great. And thank you so much for agreeing to do this and for having such insightful answers to everything. Because, I mean, I, I've interviewed some other people before, but I haven't interviewed anyone in engineering or as an engineering manager. So this is like a whole different perspective. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. I had a great time. <laughs>